Load them up and roll the semis out for another weekend of racing. Welcome to Precision Preparation Incorporated, or PPI. From 1983 to 2002, PPI compiled a diverse racing profile that included the Open Wheel Champ Car World Series, a NASCAR stock car team, the Mickey Thompson Stadium Truck Series, and the SCORE Desert Off-Road Racing Program. All based out of this one-of-a-kind motorsports headquarters owned by native Southern Californian Calvin Cal Wells III. The company's rich racing history includes multiple wins and championships in the most competitive and demanding racing arenas in the United States. Today, we are tracing the development, building, testing, racing history, and the restoration of the PPI Toyota Desert Racing Trophy Truck number 015. Here is Ivan the Iron Man Stewart in his favorite seat. They come from everywhere, in pickup trucks, in RVs, in family sedans. They come from all walks of life to enjoy one of the most fascinating of all motorsports. This is SCORE Off-Road Racing, where up to 250 vehicles of every description battle the terrain, the elements, and the clock to claim victory and fame. Well, Cal was like 16, and he got invited to go down and help crew a guy at the Baja and uh, I'd never even heard of off-road racing and he came back and he was just wild for it he said dad we've got to do it we just absolutely have to get involved in this and uh, uh, just got into it and stayed with it just loved it it was the kind of thing that once it grabs a hold of you you can't let go and that's what started it all our first race was the 1973 mid 400 I had raced out of my garage with my father and my brother for years as a hobbyist and really wanted to be involved in racing. First as an athlete, I would, would hope to drive. I wasn't very good. I wanted to win more than I wanted to drive. We started by building my dad's car and Joe McPherson was our first customer and we just grew it from there. And then we built a truck for Joe and then that's when, when we met uh, Charlotte Corral and, and started the truck with Ivan. My first involvement was back about 1980, no, probably about 1979, when I heard about uh, Cal and he was opening the shop in uh, Westminster and we were looking for somebody to prep our Class A truck. And uh, I remember going over to his shop and being immaculate. I mean, it was one of the Taj Mahal of race shops. He talked to us for a long time. And I remember Charlotte Corral that I was driving for at the time uh, was convinced that he'd be a great guy to prep for trucks. So anyway, that was the first introduction to uh, meeting Cal and seeing what he did in his first class operation. So anyway, he prepped our truck for a period of time. And uh, then it was probably a couple years later that I had an opportunity to drive for Joe McPherson and Cal built me a truck there at PPI. And then uh, it just kind of moved into Toyota and I moved out of the Ford project I was working on with Charlotte Corral and it just, blossom from there and just kind of watch the whole thing uh, really become a first-class huge operation. And being part of it was really, really a thrill for me. Along the way, PPI pocketed some great sponsors like Toyota, BF Goodrich, MCI, Bilstein Shocks, Coors Beer, Pioneer, and many more. Of all the drivers we had uh, running Toyotas uh, with Cal and PPI, Ivan was the one that over that 17 year period, he remained. Everybody, others came, others went, others did well. No question about that, others won championships. But at the end of the day, not only uh, did he do the job, but uh, the length of time he did the job is what, you know, obviously set him apart. Interesting start with PPI and Cal Wells is uh, he and I were basically racing against each other in class eight with different programs. So he'd be working on his projects late at night. I'd be working on mine. We'd check in with each other in the middle of the night to see who was working later than the other. And one thing led to another and um, opportunities worked out. And he said, why don't you come down here? So that's what I did towards the end of 1982 when the Toyota project was starting up, went down and uh, kind of hung out there for quite a while. And when we 
migrated to trying to do this more professionally. And when I say more professionally, I mean actually do it for a factory. Tommy was just the perfect fit for what we were trying to attack. And uh, you know, we've been friends for decades and decades. In the meantime, Mickey Thompson, who had been a very successful competitor and everywhere from Indianapolis to, of course, Bonneville Salt Flats, all sorts of things that Mick did, he really wanted to take what he experienced in Baja, California and put it in the stadium and really try and accomplish the same kind of thing like the motocross guys had done, where you took motocross bikes and put them in a very confined area and did all sorts of crazy things. It remains popular today. Unfortunately, off-road racing in stadiums isn't because Mickey's not around to continue to promote it, but his concept was to have trucks compete against manufacturers to compete against each other, and he liked the compact truck version because you could fit more of them in there. And it was a fabulous opportunity for us. And he created a bridge to Toyota, and then we developed a relationship from there, and it, it grew into this ultimate example. Interestingly enough, when we first started racing with Toyota in the desert, the only power plant that they had that they wanted to promote was four-cylinder because that's what their Hilux trucks came with. They hadn't come out with a V6 in, in trucks yet, the smaller trucks, the compact trucks. And so we'd race them in the stadium, this little 152E that there was a sports car engine they, they used in the Salicas and used in all sorts of different things. So it was a reasonably well-developed engine as a 1600cc motor. And we, along with TRD, uh, they developed it into a, a larger displacement engine and, and something that could compete in off-road. Started in stadium, and then when we grew into the desert, we had to build something that was uh, light because we didn't have the same power to weight ratio that other competitors that had V6s or V8s because Toyota just hadn't migrated there yet. So the first trucks that we built for stadium, of course, they were all single seat trucks. And when we went into the desert, we wanted to run one in uh, or first class seven because everyone had the same stuff. And when we were kicked out, we migrated to the unlimited class. We just ran one and two, class two and one in class one. And, but ultimately it was just so hard to compete against guys that, that uh, at that time when we were racing against the Ford F-150s and the Chevy C-10s and the Dodge trucks that were with this massive displacement. So we had to migrate to the next marketing level for Toyota, which was V6s. And that's what spawned the, what we refer to as chassis O and O, which was a very successful car for us. And then as the, the trophy trucks came into being and, and the ground speed became even greater, we designed and built this truck, first around a V6 and then ultimately a V8, as Toyota fit V8s in their trucks. So we followed along with their production versions to help promote that. And because from a competitive perspective, we needed it. We kept it as a single seater because we were always back a book either in displacement or in power until we built, put the Lexus V8 in this truck. Essentially, we were developing um, production-based racing engines for PPI. The, the, you know, everything from, from a four-cylinder, the old 152E that we were racing in Mickey Thompson to then becoming the, the V6, uh, known as the 3VZE, which was a, a derivative of the compact pickup truck that Toyota were building at the time. And then migrating eventually to the V8 back in, uh, starting in 1997. The challenge we had was we were racing against you know, our competitors who generally all had big block V8 engines. Um, for Toyota, you know, back in the 80s, early 90s, we didn't have a full-size truck let alone a production-based V8 to go into the trucks. So, you know, the challenge for an engineering organization like TRD was getting the performance out of a you know, smaller displacement engine to compete with, uh, with the big guns that uh, the rest of the competition was bringing. I'd have to say that the key individual at TRD who was actually involved with the engine development was Larry Slaughter. Um, Larry did a great job with the initial first engine of the V8 and then development from there on to uh, what we raced with through the end of this program. And his history is impeccable with coming from being general manager at Cosworth and turbocharging the first engines at Indianapolis. So he's, he's got a great heritage that was able to shine in what we do. 015, is, as we call it, which you're seeing behind you here, was uh, an evolution of a, several different chassis. We had what we called 001 and 002, some of the first cars, and then you had the vehicle before this, which was 010, and we, we took 010 and went out to the desert, did a lot of testing and instrumenting and finding out what loads and impacts and reliability issues we were having. We wanted to make a, 
a lighter car with more wheel travel, uh, and basically overall faster and easier to, to service and maintain. So that's where this one was, uh, essentially the thought process was. But everything is just amazing. That's like a rocket ship to the moon compared to what people used to race back in the early days. Totally advanced uh, engineering development instead of being built in someone's garage with just a bunch of guys volunteering. This uh, truck that you see in there was the result of 50 people working night and day for two years to get it done. Every piece on it is custom made right down to the nuts and bolts. Well, that was, that was an exciting project because it seemed like, you know, after working together for the better part of 10 years, we had the opportunity as two engineering organizations to really build a proper truck engine package. I mean, we, you know, Cal and I to this day still f refer to that vehicle as the Formula One of, of off-road racing. Um, you know, from, from the engine side, you know, down to the truck side, it was, it was designed and built as one piece. And so, so often in racing, you build a race car and then you take an engine and you plug it in. But again, having worked together with PPI for so, so many years, again, we had the opportunity to kind of design it from a clean sheet of paper and incorporate, you know, what we knew we had to run as the engine. Uh, so it was, it was a special opportunity. If you go back over when we started actually drawing the plans for it and thoughts and ideas, it was probably two years to build it type of thing. I know the, the plans were less, but the reality is it was about two years. We started thinking about it in uh, 92, I want to say. Started building it in 93-ish. Uh, and then at the end of 93, it was basically completed, but we opted to use 010, the older chassis, the 93 Baja 1000. This was faster and lighter, but we had no track record with it. So we opted to run the old vehicle, and it was a, a good thing we did because we ended up winning overall. It was one of the first times a, a four-wheel vehicle actually beat the motorcycles also. So that was the, the final race for 010, and uh, it became a museum car at that point. And then we started our challenge with 015 and reliability for probably three quarters of a year to really get the bugs sorted out and then it was dominant after that. Well, we, we were always in a partnership with TRD, so Toyota Racing Development would handle the, the power package itself. That was their wheelhouse and what they did very, very well. For us, every time we leaned on a vendor for anything that we didn't have complete quality control and performance control over, we would suffer. Either we couldn't go fast enough or we couldn't maintain whatever uh, competitive advantage we might think up because you just couldn't acquire it. So by ultimately manufacturing virtually everything, and then this truck from the wheels up, I mean, the steering wheel is something we bought, but other than that, everything here is manufactured either by us or to our specs by very high-end uh, uh, manufacturers like the, like the radiator. We didn't get into the radiator business, but we designed and, and developed cooling packages very specific for this type of, of challenge that off-road racing presented. And having that, that ultimate control over the product gave us a competitive advantage, not only in speed, but in reliability and durability. Well, we, uh, we, worked, we worked hand in glove with, uh, with PPI and with, with TRD in terms of generating exposure for our efforts. It was made easier than you would expect due to the fact that the team uh, demonstrated exceptional prowess uh, on the racetrack and in, and in the desert. Uh, over a 13, 14 year period of time, we wound up just on the stadium side alone, capturing nine driver's championships, 11 manufacturer's championships, and in the desert with Ivan, I mean, you can't even keep track of how many Baja 500s he, uh, he won. Uh, it's in excess of 12, but probably 15, 16, 17, all in a uh, Toyota truck. And then, of course, the evolution from the, uh, the compact truck to the quote-unquote Tundra-based truck, you know, that just, that just further enhanced the, um, the uh, off-road image that the company was trying to enhance. I think, I think one thing we need to keep track of is that throughout the 80s 
and the 90s, particularly on the West Coast, the Toyota compact truck, the production model, was exceptionally popular. And so our successes in the stadium series and in the desert obviously fed on that popularity. So it was kind of like a win-win situation for the team and again for TRD because that's where the engine power came from and also for, uh, for Toyota. My role at that time at PPI was essentially special projects manager. And so I was involved uh, right from the concept of it because I knew all the reliabilities, the issues, I'd raced these types of things in my life and uh, worked with a good, good group of people from Ted Mangles, who was probably the senior engineer on the whole project, great guy, he won the first Baja 1000, uh, to guys like Jack Ald, um, Chuck Wade, Peter Miles. There was a whole cast of characters there that we all really pooled our ideas. It was really a round table discussion of what to do, how to get there, how to build it. And obviously with a democracy you have issues of whose idea gets, gets used and it just was a good formulation of everything um, to how to get to a common goal. Leave your emotions at the door and move forward. I, I actually remember the day we first took it out and uh, um, it, the, the dexterity that the truck showed with Ivan at the helm was really something, a, a significant step forward from the other vehicle that we had abandoned that had been so successful for us. And it was tough to pull yourself away from something that you'd, you'd ultimately developed into something, as Ivan has uh, mentioned several times, and, and you'll hear from him again later on today, how successful that thing was. We could count on, on really putting the numbers up, but the harder he had to run to keep up with um, uh, and lead the, these big ground-pounding V8s, really pushed us to design this truck. And the first time we took it out was at Barstow. We, we had this little five mile loop that we would use as a testing area to develop shock absorbers and develop torsion bar suspension packages and tires for BF Goodrich and all sorts of different things. And uh, the first time around there, I, I remember we, we didn't want to go very far because we want to see what leaked and you know just installation checks and so on and so forth. But when he started driving this thing through the holes, and how nimble and, and how much more control he would have over this, how much more the tires would stay hooked up with the, with the ground and how the weight and balance polar moments, so, so many things that we designed into this truck gave him more a, a sense of, of being at one with the vehicle and subsequently with the road. And it was magic to watch because we really knew, you know, I think we've, we've, we've got something special here. And then it proved to be true. It led the way in technology. I, mean, I think for years and years, I think uh, Cal and his whole team and engineers and uh, the whole staff had, had the ability to kind of foresee what the next wave was going to be as far as technology and uh, engines and suspension and everything that, uh, that's involved. And this was just was the latest, the latest uh, evolution of a lot of trucks that I had driven over the years. So this was the, you know, the fastest, the most latest technology, the most probably the most fun to drive. Ivan the Iron Man Stewart earned that iconic title as he drove every race alone, and alone in the middle of Baja is really alone. In 1983, Ivan was hired by Cal Wells of Precision Preparation Incorporated to drive their one-of-a-kind Toyota. The PPI Stewart Combo dominated stadium and desert racing for years. Ivan amassed 88 career victories and eight Parker 400s, 17 Baja 500 titles, and three Baja 1000s. He was voted Scores Driver of the Year five times and was instrumental in Toyota, winning 11 manufacturers' championships in the stadium series. Ivan was inducted into the Off-Road Hall of Fame in 2008. As a driver, he is a phenomenon. Well, I, I've been winning the Baja 1000 for sure would be the, the, the crown jewel. Um, what was nice is when we showed up, we knew we had the sharpest knife in the drawer and we knew we had the best driver with Ivan and we knew he would, he would get the most out of it and we, we had a high level of confidence that, that um, on game day we would, people would have to work hard to beat us. What's interesting, I. I served in the military for a few years um, before coming into the racing world, and, and you wouldn't think there are many parallels, but, but one of the, the ones that I found uh, to be absolutely true 
is that they're both very intense, uh, stressful environments. And, and working in those environments with, with your, with your, whether your fellow soldiers or your, your fellow team members develops very special bonds. And you know, the, the memories that I still have today of those days you know, chasing Ivan down the desert and, and the hours and the, the stress, the agony of defeat, the thrill of victory, um, those, those, are, um, those are difficult to replace, special moments for sure. Yeah, winning the Baja 1000 overall, it was a, uh, you know, we all want to win that when everybody is in racing at some point in time would love to win that. And to win it overall, uh, it was fantastic. Nothing like the feeling of uh, running this truck for a thousand miles and seeing the lights of La Paz at about two or three o'clock in the morning. Fantastic. That's the, that's the highlight. You know, going down to Mexico and being involved, uh, chasing, if you will, in, in some of those races with Cal, with members of his team, with members of the TRD group. Uh, those are, you know, those are things that they all kind of run together. Uh, but there were so many, there were so many victories down there that it's it's hard to pick one out. Although uh, the uh, the uh, Baja 1000 win that we generated uh, was kind of uh, kind of cool, over a thousand miles. Uh, that was that was pretty special with that truck. 60 miles south of San Diego, the city of Ensenada was the kickoff point for the 1998 Baja 1000. The day before the race was wild as the vehicles paraded through the crowds on the way to tech inspection. This is really a lot of fun. This is the time for the mechanics and the engineers to show off the new trucks they're going to race in the big race to La Paz and all the manufacturers come out, all the so contingency donors show their wares, just a tremendous amount of fun. comes into the finish at La Paz. 19 hours, 8 minutes, and 20 seconds from leaving Santo Tomas, some 1,070 miles away. With an average speed of 56 miles per hour. Congratulations, Ivan. Well, thank you, Jorge. I gotta tell you that Cal Wells and I both have been trying to win this race for 25 years and finally to get it, feel great. As they say, deja vu, Groundhog Day, however you wanna look at it, uh, it was very interesting. because. Uh, this project came around and Cal said, well, do you know anyone would want to work on it and you know, get this thing kind of at least in condition to sell? And before we even talked about getting running, I said, well, I'd be interested in helping with this. And we just got back late last night from up at uh, Leon Patton's using his dyno and just had a chance to run the engine on the dyno for the first time last night. So just kind of like a new baby giving it a smack on the bottom and burp its first breath out and get it running. It was broken in, uh, did all new mapping on it, and came out real close in uh, horsepower to what we originally were, but we actually, in a little bit of that trade-off, we actually gained quite a much broader torque band. So we're actually pretty excited to see how Ivan likes it because it's not so much always the horsepower as how fast it gets there. And I think actually at the end of the day, this will probably be the best running engine package we ever had in the vehicle because of that broad power band. So I'm kind of excited to see how it runs. As you look past me to see 015 and it's 
bare naked frame and waiting for the engine that's sitting here on the floor to go in and all the other pieces we got to put together. It'll go to a, a photo shoot for Dirt Sports Magazine for their masterpiece of metal, which will be a, an honor for this vehicle to get some recognition because a lot of people that haven't seen it know what it was. So it'll get very, very uh, well-deserved coverage on that. From there, we'll go to the desert for a, a shakedown test with a group of us, including Ivan Stewart, to go wheel it around again and hopefully be nice to it uh, to show that, hey, this is still it. This is the car. This is the real deal. And um, here it is in living color. Today, we're shooting uh, Ivan Stewart's uh, Toyota Trophy truck, um, last run in 2000. This will be our 85th masterpiece of metal. Um, as far as which one is my favorite, it's tough to say what would be my favorite. Uh, there's so many, so many amazing trucks that we've had the, the opportunity to shoot for Masterpiece of Metal. But I'd have to say that this would be at the very top, if not the top of my list, um, just because of the history of it, number one. Number two, it is such a unique truck, whereas these days um, you can go out and buy a chassis, and, and in fact, all the top trucks are all the same chassis. This truck, there isn't a part on it that you could get off the shelf, pretty much. It's all custom made. So it's extremely unique, which is great and, and kind of refreshing these days to, to look at something and go, wow, I've never seen that before or, you know, haven't seen that since, you know, they used it. So it's pretty, it is definitely, I would say, if not the coolest one, one of my favorite for sure. Well, we're taking it out tomorrow to Barstow to commission it. And uh, you know, assuming that goes well, it's about ready to go. kick doing this today with uh, all the group of guys out here from Toyota and TRD and just on and on and on and it's just uh, really been reliving our misspent youth you know you, all of a sudden you throw that mirror away because you're not looking in the mirror realizing you're 12 years older at this point and just the look on Ivan's face kind of like whoa this is a lot of fun let's go race and you know just as you can see trying to get him out of the car it's like okay Ivan we're done oh one more time you know <laughs> so uh, he's having a great time in it too so it's just uh it's a shame, you know, the program ended up closing the way it did. This is neat to see it happen here. And, you know, who knows from here what what will hold for it. It would be, to me, this would be the smartest dollar investment for any sponsor to get involved with for just the marketing tool. 
bring Ivan back a little bit, run a couple races a year, just for the marketing exposure. I think they'd be surprised how well this thing would do. Same amount of fun that I, I had 12 years ago and beyond, and great feeling. I mean, it has a great sound. It, it, the throttle response is un, unbelievable, and shifts as well. The brakes work as well. It handles as well. We just got a 12-year gap in there. <laughs> but it's a ton of fun. I mean, it really brings back great memories of gets my competitive juices flowing again, you know? <laughs> the, the walking the annals of what I laughingly call my mind, it's, it's been a, a wonderful opportunity to, to um, bring to life PPI's past, Ivan Stewart's heritage, you know, Tommy's incredible mechanical and manufacturing skills, and bring our little family back together one, one more time to enjoy and embrace something that we built our whole life around. It's just fantastic. We so defined ourselves by our accomplishments in the desert and, and the, the incredible competition and now to be out here again with Ivan and, uh, and our little band of brothers has just been a wonderful experience. Irreplaceable, really. Irreplaceable.